and welcome to the year 2023. We are starting the year a little different. Uh, yesterday morning, Susan notified us that she tested positive, so she can't be here. Um, also, we have a, another couple of folks that are in isolation because of COVID. So uh, my first message to you is that's why we put some tape on the, the pews and spacing people out. Just be careful, be safe, that kind of thing. So um, myself, um, Scott, Karen, and Carrie will be doing parts of the service. It was all mapped out for us by Susan yesterday. Uh, Natalie is playing the piano this morning for Kay. She has the day off. So it's going to be a little different. We hope, we hope we do okay. I'm sure that since Susan is watching us on YouTube now, <laughs> well, I don't know if she'll tell us we, the mistakes we make or not, but we'll let that go. Um, so please uh, plan on, I've got my announcements here, please plan on picking up poinsettias as you're able this week. The office will be open Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 to 2.30 and Friday from 9 to 12.30. Or if you want to give them after the service, certainly you can do that. Uh, make sure that you have a bulletin and a purple hymn book. And we are not doing communion today. So if you look at your bulletin, the things that will be removed from the service. Um, we're not going to be doing Stu's Corner. Um, and after the response in the bleak midwinter, number 144, uh, we have celebration of the Lord's Supper in the bulletin. That will be uh, not done. And we will be using the prayer after communion as the prayer of dedication for the offering. So those are the the little changes that, that we're going to be doing this morning. Today is Little Red Wagon collection. Uh, that won't be picked up until the second Tuesday, so more can be added next week if you wish. Uh, the warming tree, um, certainly we're still looking for children's hats, mittens, gloves, scarves between now and next week, the 8th, to be collected and taken to AB. C.D. and Williamson for the children of migrant workers. Susan has stated before that there, mem there will be a membership class that will be starting sometime after the beginning of the new year and just let her know if you are interested. Uh, and I'm also making an official announcement. The annual congregational meeting will be held January 22nd after the regular worship service for approving last year's annual congregational minutes for receiving the annual uh, 2022 committee and team reports and for receiving the 2023 budget and also the election of ruling elders for the class of 2025 and deacons for the class of 2024, 2025 and then a nominating committee for the offices for 2024. So all that will happen at a congregational meeting on January 22nd. Does anyone else have any announcements that they wish? Okay, we're good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations, Henry. <laughs> At this time, Natalie will do our prelude.
Thank you, Natalie. Please join me in our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon us. From far-flung lands, people stream to the light. We come, drawn toward the brightness of dawn. Lift you your eyes and see the faithful gather together. Our hearts rejoice as we greet the Lord with prayer. God of endless light, you sent a star rising from darkness, guiding seekers and sages, overwhelming us with joy. Let the splendor of your dawning light grow in us and in all the world until the whole creation shines with your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Even when God's light gives us a clear path to follow, we find ourselves wandering in the wilderness. We do not need to hide from the light. We can come before God with every part of our lives 
that we may be restored to God's way for us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries for justice. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin and pour out the gifts of your spirit that forgiven and renewed, we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. The mercy of the Lord is like rain, like showers that water the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. With thanksgiving, we rejoice in the reconciliation found in the forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ. Let us therefore be reconciled with our neighbors and share signs of Christ's peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And also with you. Please take this time and share signs of peace with your neighbors. Holy One, giver of all light, lift up our hearts and minds to Christ, the morning star that never fades. By the light of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us your saving word and lead us to offer our lives to you in service and in love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson today is from Isaiah, chapter 60, verses one through six. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version that's updated. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons, and, your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. 
Our second lesson is from Matthew, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. It's the visit of the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and have been warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Good morning. The sermon today is entitled The Revelation of the Magi, which was prepared by Pastor Susan, which I will share for her. It focuses on Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. Today we celebrate Epiphany. The word epiphany means revelation. The season of epiphany extends over a period of six and a half weeks. It is bookended by two major events, that of Jesus's baptism and that of Jesus's transfiguration on the mountain. Both serve to reinforce God's revelation of God's self in the man Jesus. They both affirm that this very same Jesus is God's beloved son. The word revelation means to show us something we did not know or see before. In Christianity, revelation refers to the way in which God reveals God's self. Revelation does not only happen to saints or holy people. Revelation happens through the reading, the listening, and to the contemplation of God's word. Revelation also happens in everyday life when we experience transformation. Most of you know that before I became a pastor, I worked as a vocal general music teacher in the public schools. One thing I did was to put on yearly musicals with third and fourth graders with between 80 to 100 students. One thing that struck me after years of doing this is how I set the pieces up. Chose the musical, assigned parts, set up rehearsals, got parents involved with sets and props and costumes. Then there came a time when the musical took on a life of its own. After that point, I was still involved directing, but this was the fun part, where the students took the lead and grew into their parts and made the music the musical. Sometimes this happened before the musical was to be put on. Sometimes it didn't happen until they got their first laugh and clapping from the audience. You could always tell that is matter and spirit coming together to transform. This is revelation. The students revealed or showed the audience something they didn't quite get until that moment when the musical took on the life of its own. This made the effort worth it. Epiphany is traditionally celebrated on January 6th, 
We are celebrating today because January 6 falls between Sundays. On Epiphany, Epiphany the readings that, we, that were read today, one from Isaiah and one from Matthew, are used as we recognize the Magi. These Magi remain mysterious figures. One might even question why they are part of the Christmas story. Luke included shepherds, Matthew included Magi. The story from the Gospel of Matthew is the only time that the Magi are present in the Nativity story. This begs the question, why? Why don't the Magi show up in any of the other Gospels? What is their importance in Matthew? In his book, Introducing the New Testament, author Mark Powell suggests that the Magi, coming from so far to worship Jesus, are part of a theme in the Gospel. This theme asks the question, where is God? Powell maintains that Matthew answers this question with three propositions. First, God is present in Jesus. Powell says that this might not have been a very radical claim since Jewish people recognized that God was present in lots of good people, Moses, David, and many of the prophets like Elijah. Powell goes on to say that Jesus was not just an agent of God or that God worked through him. Rather, when Jesus was born, God entered the world in a way as never before. Where is God? God is with us. Thus, the Gospel writer thinks it's appropriate for Jesus to be worshipped. The Magi are one of eight times in the Gospel when people worship Jesus. Thus, the point is that God is present in Jesus in such a way that worshipping Jesus counts as worshipping of God. This is well and good while Jesus is alive, but what about after the resurrection? This transforms the question. If God is present in Jesus, then where is Jesus after Easter? Paul states that Matthew makes the point that Jesus is present in the church. Jesus affirms that he will be amid his followers when they come together in his name to pray and that he be with them as they go out into the world to make disciples of others. Thus, the answer to where is God is, God is to be found in the church. The writer doesn't stop here, but poses a third proposition. The writer seems to know that not all will come to church to seek God. Where do you find God outside of the church? Paul states that for Matthew, the church is not a static institution, but rather a dynamic movement. Missionaries go out into the world to bring good news, healing, and life. Thus, the church is present in the world. Do the Magi in some way not only represent the worship of Jesus as God, but do they open the possibility of other instances of God's revelation in the world? This is the question posed in the book I just recently read called the revelation of the Magi. God does work in mysterious ways. I have many books behind my desk. Most of them recently came from my high performance coach, a pastor who has retired. One day I turned around to grab something and noticed this book on the shelf. Knowing that Epiphany was close, I took it home to read. The book is an English translation by scholar Brent Landau of a forgotten ancient manuscript that he found in the Vatican. Well, this caught my attention. In the introduction to his book, Landau says that no matter whether you are a churchgoer or not, just about everyone has heard of the Magi, usually known as the Three Wise Men, and their tradition of gift giving. Landau recounts the story from Matthew and points out the many gaps there are in the story. Matthew names no specific country for the Magi's or origin. There is no number or names given to the Magi. It is assumed that there were three Magi because of the three gifts, but this is not specified. Landau goes on to say that the Greek word magoi doesn't really mean wise men. It means magicians. This name is used elsewhere in the New T Testament in a clearly negative sense. Then there is the problem of the star. Matthew never explains how the Magi came to know that this star revealed the birth of the king of the Jews. And there is an added problem that the star behaved strangely, disappearing and then reappearing. 
This man manuscript is one of only a few texts that focus on events surrounding the birth of Jesus. It is apocryphal or outside the normal canon. As Landau translated the ancient manuscript from the Syriac language into English, he realized that this manuscript told the story of the Magi in the first person. It was an imaginative work that began in the Garden of Eden and ended with the Magi being baptized by the Apostle Thomas. According to this manuscript, the individuals were called Magi because of their language. This means to pray in silence. In other words, they were mystics. These mystics acquired from Seth, the son of Adam, a prophecy that a star of indescribable brightness would someday appear heralding the birth of God in human form. According to the story, one day the star does appear and leads the Magi to a cave where his light dissipates to reveal a small luminous human. This star child reveals that he is the son of God, but never calls himself by Jesus or Christ. They are instructed to follow him to Jerusalem where they may witness its birth and participate in the salvation God has planned for the entire world. Led eventually to Bethlehem, the infant commissions the Magi to become witnesses to him and his gospel for the people of their homeland. They return to their homeland and do as they are told. In addition to the original manuscript, has the Apostle Thomas come to the homeland of the Magi and tell them of the ministry of Jesus. Thomas baptizes the Magi, who then perform miracles and preaching. What makes this manuscript interesting is the fact that it has a very unusual understanding of the origins of the world's religious tradition. Instead of seeing non-Christian religions as products of human vanity or demonic inspiration, the revelation of the Magi sees potentially all revelation as coming from Christ himself. Last week, we talked of incarnation. Richard Rohr goes on to write that one possible reason we have trouble with the full incarnation of Jesus is because we remain unaware of incarnations everywhere. We fail to recognize the divine image in ourselves and in others. To prove his point, Rohr quotes a writer, Marianne Williamson. She writes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear that is that we are powerful beyond measure. You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liber liberates others. What and who the Magi were is not as important as the revelation that we bring to our lives, the recognition that God, that Jesus is God Emmanuel. As Rohr says, this creator of ours is patiently determined to put matter and spirit together, almost as if the one were not complete without the other. The season of epiphany that we are about to enter gives us time to respond. It invites us to contemplate God's revelation, God's incarnation in ourselves, in others, and in God's creation. Finally, I like what Brian O'Connell has to say. The season of Epiphany is an invitation to follow Jesus into the ways of gratitude and joy. We are no longer bound by the dissatisfaction of our consumer culture that tells us to keep striving for more stuff, more success, more money, more of everything for myself. Instead, we are invited to learn to live in the joy and contentment of seeing every moment as a gift from God. Let the season be an invitation to follow Jesus into the ways of gratitude and joy, much like the Magi so long ago, when they too followed the gift of a star. 
to find fulfillment, joy, and salvation in the form of a human babe. Please join us in singing hymn number 145, What Child Is This? Please join me in the affirmation of faith taken from the Confession of 1967. God has created the world of space and time to be the sphere of God's dealings with humankind. In its beauty and vastness, sublimity and awfulness, order and disorder, the world reflects to the eye of faith the majesty and mystery of its creator. Now we will have the prayers of the people. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. God of years 2022 and 2023 and of all times and places, you have journeyed with your people from the very first moment of relationship in that garden, through the events of history and alongside the events of this last year and the year to come. Show us each day the beauty of your creation, the strength of your human community, and the potential of our aspirations. Still we find ourselves in uncertain times, disorienting circumstances, and long for the restoration of your creation and community. In that longing and uncertainty, we lift our prayers of intercession and supplication up to you. We pray for our newly elected leadership in the United States. May leaders govern 
with a heart for the welfare of the people of this land and every land. May they find common ground to bring the greater good into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the war in Ukraine and Russia, for families ripped apart and grieving the losses of loved ones, as well as the trauma of war on their children and future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the women of Iran and the Iranian people seeking greater agency, equality, and opportunity for them and their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those held hostage and without due process as pawns of states and terrorist groups. May people never be used as currency and their humanity, dignity, and agency be preserved and always honored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw close to each one of us in body, mind, or circumstance, gentle, gentle Savior. Teach us where we may become hands and feet that all may know your grace and your powerful love. We pray for those who need your love and care this day. We pray for Aaron, Bethany, Dom, E.T., James, Glenn, Todd, Richard, William, Jamie, Douglas Groover, Christine, Daniel Allerton, Doris Waddell, the sauce of her, loss of her son, Wanda Gallagher, Emma Downey, Lisa Tremiti, Shirley May, Becky Teeter, Ginny Bodine, Sandy Rood, Joan B., Carol Howell, Becky Durr, Dan and, and Gil Marcano, David, Steve, Linda Laurie, Barb, Vienna, Kara and Ryan, Scott Blondell, Joe, Karen Watson, Mark Booth, Deb Comfer, Marion Maxwell, Sue Rowe, Kenan Rosanna Rowe, Susan Frost, and Family Promise Families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those, O oh God, who have lost loved ones in 2022. We pray for the friends and families of Lee Prong, Lynn Donaldson, Vern Coleman, Susanna Bleak Stressing, Reverend John Watkins, the Johnson and South families, Dorothy Earhart and Melody Neely, Florence Chapin, Sean O'Toole, Steve Kepner, Richard Mosick, and Richard Lunt, Patricia Kopp and Bill Gashon, Laura Bounds, David Papineau, Donna Gulick, Donald Hannigan, Jamie Stube, Nancy Otnod, Jean Osterling, Debbie Pastos, Mark Williams, Vicki Shirley, Father of Judy, Sandra White, Ed Smith, Nelson Galvin, and Carol Wilson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, renew those needing respite. We pray for Bonnie and Thurlow, Ed and Cheryl, Kay and Dale, Jean and Paul, Barb, Eileen B., Betty C., Thelma, and Jim and Ann Peck. Mighty God, whose word we trust and whose spirit enables us to pray, accept our requests, and further those which will bring about your purpose for our world. Finally, hear us as we pray together in the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we proceed with the invitation to the offering, I'd like to uh, introduce a, a special guest that we have here today. Uh, I was informed that this person is a, a good friend of Pastor De uh, Susan's. And as they say, a friend of Susan's is a friend of ours. Uh, Jennifer, would you like to come down front and uh, introduce yourself a little more formally? 
Jennifer Carius is from Ithaca, and that's about as far as my notes go today. So I'm going to let her inter introduce herself. Uh, please come forward. Yeah, you put me on the spot. Thank you for the invitation. And good morning. Good morning. And happy new year. Really happy new year, right? Um, so I'm actually originally from Wisconsin, but I came um, via a couple different professional and geographic uh, journeys um, to Syracuse to do my master's program. And that's what brought me to the Finger Lakes. And actually, I know Susan only from the fact that she's taking more responsibility within the Presbytery. And she and I had spoke about the possibility I could appear as a guest speaker sometime. As a student of spiritual direction, uh, I'm doing a master's in that. And from another faith tradition, where women aren't allowed to minister um, to a congregation. Um, I am doing communion ministry um, through the Catholic Church, and I'm considering seminar, seminary within your tradition. So thank you so much for allowing me to visit. I meant to see her today and hear her. And we have heard her wonderful sermon today and um, calls um, me as a student of spiritual direction to consider the way that the Holy Spirit is moving in our lives right now. And I believe Susan's uh, offering today does address that. When Bill asked me to come here, he said, well, perhaps this is, this is supposed to happen this way. So at first I said, no, <laughs> I'm not prepared because I haven't studied your scriptures from today, but I did look at them. And um, so maybe let's take a moment to just ingest what she said today, um, what she's given and studied um, about the Magi and about the presence of God in our lives. And maybe just take a moment of silence reflecting what has God and my faith brought to me this year. In all gratefulness, let's just take a moment, a few moments to reflect. Maybe close our eyes and feel in our hearts. These are the gifts that God has given me this year. And as you open your eyes, imagine when the Magi traveled and by a star and were filled with joy when they discovered this baby And keep in mind that they left on a different road. They didn't go back to Herod, to the king, because they received a dream to tell them to not go back to him. And realize we are in a circumstance always. This Jesus Christ, which means in, from Greek, from Hebrew, the anointed one, they believed he was the king of all nations. They, we came to understand Jesus as the king of all nations. And what does this mean that a baby is given that gift, is given that status? Right? And that we're still living that is an testament that we are apostles that we have apost apostolic um, capacity to bring this light, to be anointed by God, that Jesus as a person 
from Israel a people God has spoken. And this is the message that we're still carrying forward in our lives. And we still, we do that every day when we pray and recognize God's gifts in our life. And finally, I'll say, it's only through darkness, right? This dark of winter and then crossing over the solstice that we realize true light as well. So maybe just a word of hope that um, to find this light in, uh, in our darkness of our day and to realize we've been called every time we come here to pray together and to praise together and to be humble yet not distracted by the messages of the darkness and to know in our hearts the true gift of being with God as we were just in silence. So I hope I've given something by connecting with you like this this morning. And may we also consider the light we've been given to look at our new year, the new way to not be distracted by darkness and to live closer and closer to God in the light and go the other road if need be, but to have courage in this light in the world today. So thank you. I think that's what I'll say today. Shall we just close with one more moment, a few more moments of silence for now, the way we wish to bring our life to light in the Holy Spirit in the coming year? Would that be an okay idea? All right, just one few more moments. Thank you, Jennifer. In the babe of Bethlehem, we have been given an immeasurable gift. May we give our gifts to play our part in the refrain of his story of redemption for our lives and the world. Let us give of our tithes and offerings. And please join in hymn 144 in the bleak Midwinter, verse 4.
Bethlehem. Bethlehem.
Go be part of God's crescendo of redemption. Bring the instrument or voice of your life story to play in part, a part in God's chorus and orchestra of love. Bring others into the music that they may both contribute joyfully to something larger than themselves and offer something beautiful to the world God has created. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and the power of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you and all you encounter this week and forevermore. And let us all say, Amen. Amen.